Uh, last week you're on the campaign trail. Uh, where did you go? Uh, what were voters' expectations? And what did you discuss with them? Well, we started uh, our campaign uh, in the Kotaik Mars, in the region of Kotaik in central Armenia. Then we went uh, to the south uh, and then to the region around Mount Araga. So we've been on five or six regional uh, visits, including uh, a few communities in Yerevan. We'll continue that after April 24th uh, to the north. And basically, uh, we're meeting with, uh, with voters, uh, family by family, uh, neighborhood by neighborhood, and basically uh, first ask their opinion on how they see the election, what they expect uh, of their candidates, how to change the country, and second, to, uh, to give them some empowerment, a citizen's empowerment, to draw them out of the fatalism and the indifference uh, that has beset a large part of the Armenian population, because for 20 years in our own country, not in the Ottoman Empire or the Soviet Union, in our own country, the vote has been stolen from the Armenian people. And so as we draw them out of their fatalism, we talk about uh, not only foreign policy issues like the genocide and uh, Turkish Armenian relations, mountainous Karabakh and Jawa, but also what is nuts and bolts for the average family is uh, dignity, uh, it's, uh, it's work, it's employment, uh, it's a, uh, a decent living for them and their families, and a way to get uh, to that uh, objective. And uh, I think that you know, one of the calls uh, of the Heritage Campaign is um, there's no need, uh, no to handouts, yes to jobs. Uh, there's no reason for political parties or even ministers of state as they are in government to offer handouts, uh, doctors, uh, others tractors, yet others uh, jams and jellies and things like that uh, on the eve of elections or during elections when uh, that very same uh, care, uh, health care, uh, the right to education, the right to work, uh, and the right to a decent living to feed families is a basic constitutional right of the average citizen of the Republic of Armenia. So we're saying no to handouts, yes to work, and offering ways that we could do that by uh, taking the fat out of government, uh, by uh, increasing the budget through a progressive tax, and by getting all this sort of this the shadow economy into the budget. And through that, uh, in the five years' time, this heritage forms part of a new majority of the National Assembly and in government uh, to raise salaries, to raise uh, pensions, uh, and ultimately, over five years, to put an end to this emigration, this brain drain of the last 20 years. If in five years' time we do not turn emigration into immigration or the beginnings of a great return, I think all of us together will have failed. So this is uh, the basic message of the Heritage Campaign. What is the status of the Center for Public Oversight of the Elections? Have Heritage and Free Democrats officially pulled out, or are the talks uh, ongoing? Uh, Heritage, the Heritage Campaign, which includes the Heritage Party, the Free Democrats, and civil society, uh, young people, activists, bloggers, uh, young intellectuals, um, has come, come, uh, come out and has faced the public with a bold new initiative to say that we will transform Armenia democratically and nationally uh, in the year ahead. Uh, we have been in favor, always, five years ago during our first parliamentary run and thereafter, uh, of, uh, of consolidated, united approaches between the political field and civil society. Unfortunately, sometimes, as you know, uh, the Armenians are individualists, we're individualist people, uh, sometimes we're more partisan than we should be, and we were not able, for example, five years ago to come together and create a, a political uh, citizens' alternative uh, to the ruling administration. But five years afterwards, uh, we hoped that we would be able to come together, if not with all nine participant parties, uh, at least with four of them, uh, to come together with a monitoring oversight uh, alternative. Let me make one thing clear. Uh, it is the Armenian Constitution, the Armenian laws, if properly applied for the first time in Armenian history, that will provide the benchmarks for assessing the election. Everything else, public oversight, party oversight, partisan oversight, those are all good things, but they're corollary initiatives to the main constitutional requirement that Armenia hold its first ever free, democratic, transparent elections in its modern history. 
We don't need extra commissions for that. But as long as there's that initiative, we welcome them. But unfortunately, we have seen among some of our partners a, a big space, a big uh, divide between the personal opinions of certain of the members of that of, of those lists, of those proportional lists, and the leaders of those parties. And we're saying this is such an important issue that if we're going to help fulfill the constitutional requirement of the Republic of Armenia, then first of all, there cannot be private individual opinions on this issue. Each list has to be represented by the number one name on that list. And I'm ready to sign with three other or eight other leaders of those lists to say that in pursuance of the constitutional laws of the Republic of Armenia, we will make sure that this time we have decent elections. And if there are not decent elections, then on May 7th, uh, the Armenian Republic and the Armenian people around the world find themselves in a very dangerous, dangerous unprecedented um, season that will lead us to possible turbulence. We must obviate that. We must prevent that, the recurrence of March 1st. And to do that, everybody has to be on board through the collective responsibility of each list and second, by, uh, by presenting in detail what it means to hold a free, fair, and transparent democratic election. If we're going to congratulate ourselves on May 7th for the first democratic elections in 20 years, then let's see what standards we're going to hold the participant parties against. Uh, and then also against the background of bribes and partisan benevolence and pressures and intimidation and the use of public property for partisan gain, as we see today. Um, we will also put on paper uh, the circumstances under which it is possible that on May 7th we say, you know what, guys, we did not have a free and fair election and we find ourselves nationwide in an extraordinary situation that requires uh, an extraordinary solution. So, uh, Heritage is in favor of collective approaches. It is my preference that as we speak today, I, speak, I sign together with eight other leaders of the proportional lists a memorandum to support the constitutional requirements of the Republic of Armenia. That failing, Heritage will cooperate with all headquarters, all initiatives, but first and foremost, it will respect the Constitution, and on May 7th, it will deliver its sovereign, complete assessment of the election and present it to the public at large. What's, what's going to take for these elections to be free and fair? As you just mentioned, there will likely be intimidation, uh, council voting, and so forth, vote buying. So, what will it take beforehand and, you know, in front of the voting station to make sure it's not going on? Uh, politics as life itself is uneven, is unfair is imperfect. So we make the decision from the very beginning. We stay home and complain about Armenia's destiny and the fact that having lost so much in history, now we have our own country, and uh, well, we're going to wait till uh, there are perfect uh, circumstances and then participate. Or we're going to say, you know what, we have an imperfect country, we have a great legacy, a strong heritage, a rich culture and civilization, but we are uh, to blame for a lot of what's gone on in Armenia in the last 20 years. Uh, we lost a majority of our homeland and a million and a half Armenians uh, 97 years ago during the genocide and great national dispossession. We've lost a million and a half to immigration in the 20 years, 20 years of our own independence. And on this count, we are to blame and nobody else. And it is here that uh, we Armenians uh, and the Armenian uh, body politic and the Armenian parties have to take uh, responsibility for our own affairs. Um, we can decide to stay home or to say that, you know what, uh, yes, it's imperfect, uh, but if the Armenian citizen is going to belong to his or her own country, we have to overcome this sense of indifference and fatalism and a constant repetition of the fact, and obviously it's a, it's a recurrent fact, that for 20 years elections have been stolen from us, stolen by the Armenian authorities, by the three Armenian administrations. And that's why we demand a new fourth alternative a fourth option for the new generation of the Republic of Armenia. And Heritage uh, believes that it is time uh, to uh, take part uh, in the elections with a complete, comprehensive uh, public alternative to that which exists today uh, in the government and in the opposition. 
yes, uh, the field is unfair. We see how the budget, how public buildings like schools and cultural houses uh, and hospitals and universities are used for private gain. The budget is siphoned off to this or that youth a fund and used for the ruling party, as an example. We go from village to village and city to city in the Republic of Armenia during this campaign and see that um, on, the, on schools, on public buildings, you have uh, the insignia, not of the Republic of Armenia, not our tricolor flag, but a party flag or a party office. And this is unacceptable. We see today that uh, the campaign finance laws are not being respected. I think those laws have to be amended because they're not realistic as 100 million dirhams and obviously people are not respecting them. Heritage will respect them and we are presenting to the Central Election Commission everything we spend. But as we go from city to city, we see on the highways the billboards that other parties have and we're spending more than they are. Uh, people are passing out phil uh, philanthropy, uh, uh, handouts uh, and, and sort of using those, employing those for partisan gain. Uh, they're using uh, all their resources to their, to their own advantage, but they're not reporting everything. So I think that on, in terms of campaign finance, the use of public resources for private gain, uh, we do have a problem. We already have an uneven field. I think in an advanced democracy, people would already say this is a, a stacked election. It's unacceptable. But I'm an Armenian. I'm an Armenian citizen. I'm in my own country. And I'm an, I will fight till the final drop to make sure that not only we achieve together our national interests, but as part of those national interests, that we have a democratic country, uh, that we have good elections that are not only European or international by standard, but they're Armenian by standard. Let everyone think of who our parents are, who our grandparents are, name by name, and try to figure out, are these elections, are stealing elections, uh, disrespecting civil rights, um, uh, disparaging another person's human liberties, part of the heritage that we receive from my parents and our grandparents and parents? No, they are not. These are not Armenian standards. And that is why um, heritage says that above the heritage flag, above the flag of the Republican Party, of the Prosperous Party, of Dashnan Sushin, of the Congress, and all the rest, is the Armenian national flag, is our core coat of arms, are our national interests. But there cannot be the pursuit of national interests and the recognition of historical injustices and the uh, acknowledgement of the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Mount Karabakh if at home we do not respect the rights of the Armenians uh, in their individual and collective capacities. That's why we say and we repeat, justice at home, justice abroad. But one thing is very clear, there cannot be national security, there cannot be national gain or interests if uh, the Armenian citizen is disenfranchised at home. Uh, we've liberated a part of our homeland in the, in the eastern part of the Armenian plateau, having lost so much in, on, in the western domain. Uh, but liberation is not only about soil, it's about the liberation of the Armenian human being, the Armenian citizen on his or her own land. That's what heritage is all about. Manuel Sapsian, the director of research for ACNIS, recently said that the elections have already been uh, predetermined. Uh, how do you stand on that issue? Uh, Manuel Sapsian is the director of research of ACNIS, which I founded. Uh, and ACNIS has always, uh, since its inception in 1994, presented independent, um, multi partisan, objective policy advice to the Armenian public, to Armenian decision makers. And this is a perfect example how we have not uh, purposefully and by design and in advance uh, politicized the institutions that I or my, fi my family have, have founded. That relates to ACNES, the Armenian Center for National and International Studies. That relates to Oran, Armenian Center that takes care of hundreds of street children in, in, in Yerevan and Vanadzor and very proud of those initiatives. Manvel has presented his opinion. Uh, that is not an institutional opinion. Uh, ACNES very rarely takes institutional points of view on anything. Uh, and that's a, a point to be uh, respected. He's very active also, Manvel is in civil society. And this goes to show that one could, should not be afraid of a competition of ideas 
a, um, a conflict of policy options. Uh, this is the, uh, the opinion of a very respected uh, public policy analyst, the director of research of, uh, of ACNIS, uh, and it's also an, an interesting litmus test. Uh, in, a, in a month's time or in a year's time, we will see uh, if uh, his uh, prediction comes true as part of uh, one based on Armenian history, on inertia, on what has happened in the Armenian reality, or we in the political realm uh, are able to give Montbell and those in the policy analysis a domain, a reason to reassess their previously stated opinions. Let's imagine a scenario where the current parties in opposition, in close cooperation with Prosperous Harmony, could take a majority in the National Assembly. Uh, will Heritage be able to find common ground with uh, the Congress, ARF, and Prosperous Armenia since I uh, haven't always seen that in the past? Uh, Heritage has always been the pivotal force in bringing all opposition and public actors together. Uh, we have been the bridge between Dashan Amsutyun and Armenian National Congress and others, and unfortunately it has been others who, because of respectable uh, policy differences, have not been able to come together. So Heritage welcomes any coalescence, a coalescence that comes on the eve of election and particular, particularly thereafter. But one thing, um, that we uh, must be mindful of, and that is we should not be guided by illusions. Right now, we have uh, a governing coalition memorandum that was signed last year in February, which continues in force to this date. It was against that memorandum, together with a lot of illegal and unlawful and unjust things in the Republic of Armenia, both in our domestic and foreign policy, for which I announced my 15-day hunger strike. One cannot use public resources, taxpayers' money, to drink champagne in a presidential uh, White House merely to sign a, a, an unlawful memorandum. We're not talking about the Turkish Armenian Protocols yet, or Karabakh. A memorandum that says, our next president will be the current president, even though the law says that only party congresses can decide who will be their candidate. Uh, and it is for this reason that uh, it is uh, an heritage's position that we must know very clearly from the number one people in each party list uh, what their opinion is, not only on this public oversight chamber or, or initiative, but uh, is there a working, is there an operative, operational coalition today or not? And the chairman of Prosperous Armenia, as well as the other signatories of the government coalition have said, yes, that memorandum is in force. All other individual opinions aside, whoever says whatever they want for whatever reason, that, uh, that memorandum uh, is in force. And therefore, uh, it would be very difficult and it would be extremely, perhaps more than hypothetical, to uh, countenance your question and say, you know, what, what would we do in this, in this circumstance? Heritage has said very clearly that if we have free and fair elections, finally in Armenia for the first time in 20 years, Heritage will form part of the majority of the National Assembly and will uh, form part of the next government of the Republic of Armenia. If that happens, if we see that day, if we prove our own Monvel incorrect, then um, we will cooperate with all other parties who are in the minority, the new minority, uh, and uh, we hope that Armenia will we'll see that day. But if anybody right now is thinking about returning to power through parliament or then presidential elections, any of the presidencies of the Republic of Armenia, Heritage says no. Heritage says, says no uh, to all three presidencies. We respect them for what they were represented for Armenia, for all the good work they've done. We've, we criticize them for all the bad that they've done. But they are the presidencies and we respect that institute of the Republic of Armenia. But Heritage says yes to one thing, and that is a new alternative, a new public option to that which has come before. And for that reason, uh, if any party in any field comes to the National Assembly through free and fair elections, we will cooperate. But we will cooperate to present a new option for a new generation and a new Armenia.